Hello everyone and welcome back to Val's Vlogs. We are back with another story time. This is a day of a day in the life of Allison part six. I cannot believe we are actually done with this story. Um so well, this is part character story. The next day we are going to do a day in the life of Bella, uh part one, and um, I'm really excited. I can't wait to start a new story. I start a new character. Um, so here we go. We are going to turn this braille note on. Or sorry, braille display. Sorry about that. My Siri was being weird. Uh, let's see. Okay. Here we go. This, so this is actually the whole story, the whole from beginning to end. So if you haven't read any of this, um, now you'll be able to hear the whole thing. So. Hi, my name is Allison. I'm 13 and live in a tiny house with my parents and little brother. He's only one year younger than me. At this very moment, I'm getting ready for school. I'm an eighth grader, you see. First... Thing was to brush my hair, teeth, shower without getting my hair wet, and find the perfect outfit. My brother and I share a bathroom, and usually I get there first. I have to get ready before he does. After he leaves the bathroom, it smells absolutely disgusting. Anyway, let's fast forward to school, getting to school. I got to school and was waiting for my two best friends, Sophia and Gracie. So sorry. Sophia and Gracie, huh? I, anyway, Sophia and Gracie. Gracie, remind me of this porcelain dolls you see in some shops. They're twins, identical, but they are so the opposite. Sophia loves drama. She plays every lead in every play and musical since she was five. Gracie, on the other hand, loves to sit indoors and curl up with several of her kittens or puppies and read a good romance novel. They even eat different things. Hiya, girls! I cried, running over to my locker, which is right in the middle of theirs. Hi, Allie. How was your weekend? Gracie asked, slamming her locker door shut. It was okay. I watched the new Chef's Bake Off last night. Did you see who won? I asked. Oh, yeah, we saw it, too. One of our favorite contestants won last night's rounds. Sophia said excitedly. Mine did too. I hope she gets to the final three. I exclaimed. Who's your favorite again? Gracie asked as we rushed off to homeroom. I like Karen Long. She makes beautiful baked goods and decorates them so nicely, I said dreamily. If I could, I had her... I'd have her bake me a cake for my birthday and decorate it. Karen is a family person. She's happily married and has four kids, all under the age of six. She's even going to have another baby. She told Chef's Bake Off this a few months ago. The cool thing is, Karen and her family actually live here. I don't know her personally, but I have seen her and her work. A couple times my parents thought about talking to her and getting a cake made for my brother and I. Sophia's favorite is Lisa Dunham, a 50-something woman who has spent 30 years baking and decorating masterpieces. Lisa had a daughter and her daughter worked with her in the, her bakery. When she got older, she got married and had two kids, a boy and a girl. The boy had died with his parents in a fatal car crash, which left his sister In Lisa's care. The granddaughter was four when Lisa brought her into baking. Gracie's favorite was Cindy Vaughn, who is young and extremely talented. She's not married, but has adopted two boys from Africa. She plans on being a foster mom and will be volunteering at orphanages. Anyway, we are now sitting in homeroom, 
a place where a lot of students tries to get their last minute homework done. But for me, sorry, but not for me. I do my homework every night, an hour before I go to bed. So I spent my time Googling bakeries and new updates from the contestants. Sophia and Grace were working on their homework, so I couldn't talk to them. As I was glancing around, Lauren Porter, my nemesis, glared at me. What's your problem? I demanded, low enough for her ears alone. Don't talk to me, she said and flipped her hair into my face. Sometimes that girl really gets to me. We were once close friends, but then she started hanging with her sister, who was in high school, and they got her into the popular crowd here in middle school. Ever since then, she's changed, and not in a good way. She was always this nice person. She would give the shirt off her back for you. She would make lunches for kids who couldn't afford them. But now, she is mean. She helps no one but herself. I kept thinking about that as the bell signaling homeroom was over. I waved to my friends as I made my way to my first official class of the day, science. This is my school schedule for the today. Homeroom, science, math, English, lunch, music appreciation, gym. My science teacher, Mr. Lansford, made science fun. We always experimented with things. As I entered the class, my seatmate, Julia, waved me over. Julia always wore something nice. Today, she wore an all pink outfit, pink sweater, pink hearts, I'm oh, sorry, pink sweater with pink hearts, pink skirt with pink flowers, and pink sandals. We talked about people, Lauren was one of those people. I just can't believe she's changed so much, I said. I know, Julia agreed. Then the bell rang, time for class. Math was a subject I despised. Luckily, my friends, Sophia, Gracie, Luna, and Lucy were there. We passed notes when our math teacher, Mrs. Johansson, wasn't looking. Now, I am a good student. I always do my work and never talk back. But math was my weak point. I even have a tutor that I go see three times a week. Today was one of those days, unfortunately. English class was one of my favorites. I didn't have any of my friends to talk to or distract me. The first thing we had to do when we entered Mrs. Harper's class is to turn in our homework, then write in our daily journal. We have to write about how yesterday impacted us, made our day good or bad. I loved writing in my daily journal. No one but Mrs. Harper read them, and she even came to us if we wrote that life was tough after school so nobody would notice. It was finally lunchtime. I got in the hot lunch line behind Gracie and Sophia. I was going to bring lunch from home, but I almost overslept and didn't have enough time to make one. I was telling them, you should make one before you go to bed, Gracie said. Yeah, but sometimes it turns out gross, I said, wriggling my nose. Plus, I kind of like the hot lunches they serve. I said, taking a tray and a fork and a spoon. Today's lunch was mac and cheese, sloppy joe, fries, and a brownie. <coughs> I grabbed a free lunch, a uh, free milk, then grabbed another one that I would pay for. After my friends got our lunches, we found a table outside underneath a shady oak tree. As we approached, more of our friends were already there. Maggie, Allie, Vanessa, and Kara waved us over. Did you guys see the new boy yet? Kira asked. Nope, we answered. Well, you should. He's smoking, Allie said, opening her milk carton. He's in my home room. He's shy, but nice enough, Maggie said, sipping on her orange juice. She was the only one that brought lunch from home. What's his name? I asked. His name is Alvin. Can't remember his last name, Maggie said. As we ate, I caught up with my friends. At the end of lunch, I spotted Alvin talking to Lauren. I hope they don't go out, Vanessa mumbled. Alvin is a hot guy, for sure. Girls like Lauren would rub him in everyone's faces. 
Music appreciation flew by in a blur. But as I got to Jim, I noticed Alvin. This was the only class we shared. He was alone, but focusing on something on his phone. Coach Val wasn't strict. As long as we did our exercise and ran two laps, we could do whatever we, whatever, what we wanted. Hey, I called, rushing toward him. Coach Val doesn't care too much, but we can't use our phones until we're done with our her exercises, I said, glancing around to make sure there was no teachers around. Yeah, I know. I was texting my mom to tell her to buy gym clothes. Coach Val is letting me borrow some old ones, he said, smiling. I had to admit, he looked cute in his old gym clothes, white shorts, and a red shirt. He looked like a sports god. We talked until Coach Val blew her whistle for the class to start. We did 50 push-ups, 50 sit-ups, 50 jumping jacks, and weightlifting. After that, we had to run around the track outside. After our mandatory two track runs, we all split up. Some girls got out a jump rope, and some girls went to a corner talking. I glanced around to find Alvin playing basketball by himself. Want to play one-on-one? -on -one? I asked, taking the ball away from him. You play? He asked, looking surprised. A lot of boys were surprised at first when I showed them that I played sports and even loved watching them, too. Yep, my little brother and I play some basketball sometimes, I said, smiling. We played a good game. He won, but I didn't care. Before class was over, he talked toward me. Hey, um, do you want to switch numbers? He asked nervously. Sure, I said, writing mine down on his phone. Then he wrote his down on my phone. After the last bell rang, my friends Sophia and Gracie and I walked home. I shortly went to my tutors an hour later. At five, my brother and I helped to make dinner. At nine, I was pooped. I couldn't wait to curl up in my bed. Since school let out, I've been texting Alvin. We talked about family, sports, food, and friends. I kind of felt bad for him. He had a lot of friends back home. I promised him that he'd make plenty of friends here. Finally, by 10.30, I said goodnight to my family. Took a shower and in bed, ah, took a shower and was in bed before 11 and was asleep five minutes later. <clears throat> the end of a day in the life of Allison. I hope that you guys have enjoyed and stay tuned for tomorrow's new story, A Day in the Life of Bella, Part 1.